The huge investment in our railways requires the right people in the right roles with the right skills. But across the rail supply sector, there are real concerns about the shortage of skilled labour and a recognition of an urgent need to diversify the workforce. All this is particularly important given Brexit and the fact that so many rail workers are from the wider European Union. Nick Thatcher has more. Amy Palmer first became interested in a career in engineering when the company she now works for came to visit her school. Today, as a graduate, she's testing measurement systems that, when attached to trains, can predict and prevent track failures. There's a big push at the minute in terms of turning the railway digital. It definitely seems exciting for the future. A lot of people, when they think of rail, it's hard hats and high vis on the tracks, whereas there's a, a huge range of job opportunities. So even if you might not think that your speciality lies in the rail industry, there will be something for you here. Amy is one of a new generation of talented young people of all skills levels the rail supply industry needs to attract. At this company, the focus is on developing apprentices. The boss here used to be one and sees them as crucial to plugging the industry's skills gap. The industry won't grow at the rate it needs to unless it plugs it. It's got 20, 30 years of gaps now, in my opinion, where the apprentices' programmes were withdrawn or were seem to be important. And we've got growth in our industry at the same time with having a massive skill shortage. Well, I joined in January, so oh, right, okay. Today, one of the local MPs is here to learn more about the industry and to meet some of the apprentices. I have friends and I say to them all the time, that they should look into something like this because I've really enjoyed it. Whilst the really big companies in the rail industry have got, have got good schemes, we need every single company in the rail industry to be having apprentices and bringing people into industry. And we also need the colleges and the skills transfer system set up correctly so that that can aid the industry in having apprentices. There's also a recognition across the industry of the need to be more diverse and the Railway Industry Association is playing its part in helping to make that happen. We work with young rail professionals, we work with women in rail. We took part in the big rail diversity challenge to make sure we've got a really young, vibrant, diverse workforce coming through and our members know about it. An example where we've helped this agenda is the plus one rail reception, where in order to attend, if you're over the age of 30, you have to bring someone under the age of 30, so you can have a room full of young people and uh, existing rail leaders as well. And what you see here is, for example, the state of flight. And the new Rear Rail Fellowship Programme gives local MPs the opportunity to spend a day on location at a site like this and learn more about the valuable work being carried out by the UK rail supply sector. We monitor over 30,000 different assets. Lillian Greenwood is chair of the Commons Transport Select Committee. Her day includes a visit to this innovation centre at Balfour Beatty, as well as an opportunity to have a go on this train driving simulator at East Midlands Trains and these have all been dug up. And to learn more about the upgrade to the Midland Main Line that's remodelling platforms and signalling systems in Derby. Thousands of people in my constituency work in the rail uh, supply chain. There's a huge potential for exports, for growing uh, British business, for well-paid, high-skill uh, jobs. It's really important that we're making the rail industry more diverse and particularly want to get more women uh, involved and more people from ethnic minorities. So they have to have an opportunity to see that this is an industry, yes, it's got a very proud heritage, but wow, it's really uh, modern and it's adopting new technologies. A modern rail industry will depend on the diversity and adaptability of its workforce. And when it comes to skills and training, minding the gap now will be crucial in realising the investment and infrastructure opportunities further down the track.